let's go deep dive in terms of what kind of configurations you can do on workstations, what kind of configurations you can do on servers, right? So the way it is is that we can go ahead and show you that the first agent, so assume that this was the computer which was actually uh, for the workstations as a baseline that I wanted to set, right? So I, what I would have done is when I, I would have actually installed the agent, right? Before even adding it as a probe, I would define some criteria that what are those common settings I would like to have enabled on all the computers. So something like if I wanted to monitor a set of services, I can go ahead and set them up here. If I want to go ahead and monitor the interface is exactly what I've done here. I can enable the remote desktop feature, which is the part and parcel of Pulse product and it comes with no additional cost. It's, it's part of the license itself that you purchase either for the server and workstation. Then let's jump on to the notification section. That makes a lot of sense. Now if you remember, we spoke about grouping. So since this is a workstation, I have that option to have this in, disabled because nobody would like to receive notifications, right? If they would be for workstation, it would be in exceptional cases where they are being used for specific broadcast or some kind of, you know, display boards or something of that sort. Now, these are the predefined notifications like, you know, an AV being monitored. So over and above the AV that we offer, you can always monitor a third party antivirus as well. You can get a notification if that AV is disabled or out of date, right? If in case those who are looking for some kind of security feature related to data being protected, right? You can enable this option and the, the administrator will get a notification if a thumb drive has been plugged in or something of that sort. Then the next thing I would like to show you is performance issues. So when you have performance issues on desktops or on servers, something to do with the processor, something to do with the memory, is what you can actually select here and get notified and always look into the processes which are causing it. If you think they're not legitimate, kill them. So the journey, you know, begins from a notification, then taking your experience either on a web app and then either going to a mobile app and troubleshooting and fixing the problems when they actually arrive. So in, in a way, your approach becomes more proactive versus reactive. Then in case of services, as you see, these are the services that are selected. You can monitor processes. So for those who are running business critical third party applications, something like QuickBooks, like an ERP package, right? For those serving doctors, some kind of medical professions, some software which runs some kind of client application to access, to help access doctors, some kind of data right? Or any, anything for that matter, you know, which is a third party application, like something as simple as Outlook. You can monitor those and if in case those applications are not started or not working with a certain criteria that you can mention here, right? You can go ahead and get notified and then troubleshoot issues. Ping. Very good use case. Sometimes what happens is when you are an MSP trying to deliver or resell something as a service, you know, if the end users have some issues, right, of internet connectivity, because of that, possibly it comes out to be that users get a feeling that the service is not consistent. So what you can do is you can actually ping devices like internet gateways, your own service, and for internal organizations, it's a great use case to ping switches, sandboxes, you know, front-end server pinging the back-end, back-end pinging the front-end, something of that sort. Not only just ping, you can mention the round trip that you're actually expecting to be maintained for a consistent service. And you can always mention that if there is no response, which is like a dead peer detection, and if there is a slow response on the round trips, what kind of alerts you would like to receive so that you can troubleshoot issues right away before they actually hit in a service interruption. Storage. In case of storage, you can monitor disks. You can actually go ahead and monitor the partitions with a specified free limit that you want to see as, as a minimum threshold, you'll be notified. And at the same time, if you have critical files on the computer, any kind of modification, any kind of change can also be monitored. So for those who actually are in a, in a position, you know, being experienced consultants, trying to deliver something on a security, ensuring their customers that if there are any specific confidential files with one of the employees, any kind of changes made on that can actually be tracked using Pulseway. Now, over and above these, you know, event log monitoring can also be done. I mean, though it makes lesser sense to go, go that deep dive, but on servers, it's of great importance. Let me show you one example. So in here, I have a domain controller that I've actually set up. Now on the domain controller, the domain controller itself can be monitored using Pulseway 
and I can go deep dive in the configuration of doing the Active Directory management as well. But the Active Directory alone itself makes no sense if there is an issue being detected on DNS, DHCP or group policy. So what we do is we go ahead and click on notification, click on event logs and then specify specific event IDs that I think are necessary to monitor the things surrounding Active Directory to make it functional. So I can click on edit and as you see I have mentioned these event IDs in place. So anything happening on a DHCP with these event IDs I'll be notified. So I know because these all need to work as a team together to make the Active Directory operation successful. Similarly, I can do hardware monitoring. Though being the trend, you know, the traditional, because virtual is the new normal, but still you have physical boxes, right? So you can monitor physical boxes for CPU temperature, for drive temperature, and something of that sort. That, as you see, are the options here. Now, all this said and done, over and above, these are the monitoring criteria. If you have scheduled tasks, which we've been traditionally writing to automate stuff, you can actually do remediation on services. You can do actually remediation on particular conditions that you can add. So let's say I put a condition that at least one of them is true and add a value to it to say if there is a specific day of the week, which is Monday, why don't you kick off this service or batch file that I have been writing over years, right? You don't have to do that anymore. Pulseway can do that for you. If there is a service status as stopped, so if you see a service being stopped, Good example, you're selling Carbonite, you're selling backup services right from the get-go to home users till the enterprise customer. Still works as a service. You can automate the remediation of that service using this feature so that way your customers, your internal users never come back and complain about a file being lost and since there was no successful backup, it cannot be restored. You can avoid situations like this. This all done, you know, this is more on the side of actually doing the core components of operating system, which is online, offline, the file system, the processes, the services, the memory, you know, the event logs. Now let's get to the next level, you know, in terms of how about if you get an experience to manage all this for a server, but at the same time, the application role itself. So in server modules, what you can do is, you can actually go ahead and monitor Active Directory, Exchange, Hyper-V, IIS and all these features as you see. Now very good example, you know a very good interesting use case that I help a lot of customers with and a lot of customers come back and tell me that this has really helped them is on SQL. SQL being the most critical you know is actually a, a server which runs at the background so performance of SQL being monitored is very important because pretty much what you do on a transactional SQL can actually hit if in case wrong queries are being written, if there's a traffic load which has grown over time and you're not sure about it. If you monitor that with Pulseway and enable the monitoring on SQL, you can be notified about these situations wherein if something happens wherein there's an, a query which is executing more than a certain time, which could be a result of a wrong query being written or something attacking your database, right? that can be avoided. If the size of the database over and above the file system is growing to a certain extent, good example, you do a backup, the logs didn't perch, right? And you get a notification on Saturday that the log size is double the size of the database. So something is wrong, right? Pulseway gives you that power to actually go ahead and monitor the SQL, look at the databases, look at the logs on the mobile app on a click of a button. You can see the status. Now, good use case, queries. SQL, you know, is, is more of a, I would say component wherein security is important but if you have missed it at some point in time it can be very harmful if people get the wrong access to it. So if you have a team who is developing a product for you, you have some kind of CRM solution hosted for your own company, you want to expose SQL to developers but be make sure that specific databases which have specific business centric information should not be accessed you can write queries alerts. So if somebody writes to write a query and trying to fetch out data like a CSV or an export, you can be notified what's happening on a database. At the same time, this was a preventive measure. On a productive measure, if you have a product, if you have some kind of third-party application which uses SQL, right? If there are specific events happening on SQL again and again, you can be notified to ensure and understand whether it's actually a behavioral you know, structural behavior, like an architectural behavior of the software, there's some something hitting, injecting into the SQL. Those kind of things is what you can go as deep dive as possible. Similarly, on Active Directory, you can be notified if the users are locked, so that way, even before users coming and telling you, 
you will see them in the log user section when you connect using the Active Directory module on the web app or the mobile app and reset their password before they even come back to you. Another good use case, with the, with the dynamics changing of the entire infrastructure landscape, you know, Pulseway is all ready to support you on on-premises or be on the cloud as well. So we support Amazon and Azure as a base platform to be monitored. So by that I mean is, you know, you can actually monitor the Azure platform from a platform perspective and still have the agent run inside the agent, the guest operating system. Same goes for VMware, very good use case. You're running VMware, no, have no visibility what's happening inside the VM, put the agent on. And at the same time, integrate the host as well. So that way, you can monitor the VMware host as well as the VM at the same time. Lot of use cases.